CataractCoach.com, AC IOL orientation and calculations. And is a scleral fixated IOL better than an AC lens? What's the correct orientation? The first thing is, look, I've closed the main phaco incision. There's a suture in it. That's because you don't want to use it. Do not enlarge the phaco corneal incision to 6.5 millimeters in order to fit the AC lens in. Make a separate scleral tunnel like we've done here. There's the lens. That's the correct orientation. And how do you know? Look at the haptic optic junction. We're showing you the video in slow motion, by the way. That haptic optic junction, that's going to have the same anti-S orientation as a standard posterior chamber lens. So again, don't look at the foot plates that are gonna go in the angle of the eye. No, 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 look right at the haptic optic junction. And I'm showing you the lens here on top of the cornea. This is the correct orientation, memorize this. And again, look where the haptic touches the optic, right there, haptic optic junction, there you go. That's the same anti-S as a poster chamber lens. So it should not be the letter S at that haptic optic junction. Now this lens is also anteriorly vaulted. What does that mean? It means the lens is not planar, it's not totally flat. There is an angulation where the center part of that optic is slightly vaulted above the plane of the haptics. And if we grab the lens and tilt it on the side, you'll see that. And why is that? Well, because remember an, AT, an AC lens, an anterior chamber lens is actually angle supported. And you need to be able to have those foot plates in the angle, and then the iris pupil zone is actually slightly above that. So there you go. There's the anterior vault. You can see it's not totally planar. And so that has to be the correct orientation. You want it vaulted away or above the pupil. You certainly also have to make a peripheral iridotomy in these patients, and that's easy to do. We've showed that in a previous video. And here, in this case, it's tucked under that arcus senella, so you don't see it so well. There it is in the eye. There's the anterior chamber lens in good position. Notice the pupil. Nice. Nicely placed behind the optic. And again, we have a peripheral iridotomy, so you're not worried about pupillary block here. You want to orient these haptics, these foot plates, in the angle. And I like them in the horizontal plane, so the patient's 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock position. And the reason is that's going to give the best support with gravity as opposed to putting it at 12 and 6. So keep it horizontal or the, the IOL haptics are parallel to the floor of the room. So 3 o'clock, 9 o'clock, that patient's horizontal meridian. And that's what we see here. Also, look, the foot plates are in appropriate position. If the pupil looks very peaked, that means you're trapped iris under one of those angle-supported foot plates. So you need to readjust that. And here we see the eye looks great. The incision, by the way, sealed up beautifully. Look at that, no sutures. Now I'll still have the resident place some sutures in this case. But this is a tricky case because the patient has a single chambered eye, unicameral. The patient already had a previous pars plane of vitrectomy. Many studies have shown that there's no difference in the visual outcome between a nicely placed anterior chamber lens and a scleral fixated poster chamber lens. So use the one you feel better using. What are the Iowa calculations? for an ACIOL. Now, your senior resident may have told you, hey, just subtract three diopters from the PCIOL power and that'll give you the ACIOL power. And eh, that's not such a good idea. There's actually a very simple way of doing it. Look at the box of your PCIOL and what's the A constant? Let's say, for example, it says 118.7. And now look at the box of your ACIOL. What's the A constant? Ah, it says 115.2. So what's the difference between the two numbers? 118.7 minus 115.2. The difference is 3.5. So a 20 diopter lens in the bag with a PCIOL is about the same as a 16.5 diopter ACIOL in its intended position, which is angle supported in the anterior chamber. So the way you calculate ACIOL power is simply by using the A constant. The delta between the PCIOL A constant and the anterior chamber lens A constant, that delta of three and a half diopters in my example, is the same delta of the IOL powers, 20 versus 16.5 in this example. And that's actually how you calculate the AC IOL power. So now you know. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. 
will send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.